Hello, everybody. I'm Robin Valentine, and welcome to The Robin Valentine Show. Joining me here today is the incomparable walking children in nature, queen with the cause, Miss Tammy Brown. Hi, how is everybody? Hello, thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much, Tammy, for agreeing to re-record this podcast with me. Mm-hmm. Just a little BTS, FYI kind of deal. When we recorded this the first time, it was in my car, so the microphone just picked up nonstop uh, the road. But and it was raining as well that night. Oh, I couldn't drive more than 40 miles an hour. Uh-huh. I could feel the car jerking, and I was like, uh-uh, I'm not going to be the one to kill Tammy Brown because people are going to write, I hope you're walking children in hell on my tombstone. Oh, in hell? Why hell? Oh, because you killed me? Yeah. <laughs> or, well, that's okay if you want to go to hell down there. I'm trying to stay out of that realm, but, uh-huh. you know, whatever happens, happens. Well, heaven is a place where nothing ever happens. That's the lyrics from a talking head song. <laughs> and in hell, I study you can find the Buddha there, too, so how about that? Really? Oh, yeah. Well, because it's just a, it's just a, a little um, theory that, you know, it's your life condition, you know? So, hell is a life condition. So, if you're in a bad life condition, your friend can get you out of that bad condition, you know, like your fellow Buddha can, or you can find your Buddhahood there as well. Oh. Instead of heaven, and a, you know, heaven is also rapture, isn't it? Heaven is fleeting, too, so it's not always there. And then in the Christian sense of heaven, I don't think I would want to be in heaven working for God all the time, cleaning and stuff. You don't do windows? No, I'm okay with doing windows. I'd rather do mirrors. Well, you heard it here first. Yeah, and then you, they always play your same song at the same time, every day at the same time. Just nonstop lip sync for your life. <laughs> lip sync for your life, I imagine, right? Tammy? Oh, yeah. And I don't think I like that running around in white clothes. Besides, we don't even have bodies when we die, so. True. Our spirit's gonna burn? That doesn't make any sense. So you just be in. in, in in mental turmoil all the time? That doesn't make any sense either. I hadn't thought about it like that. I had so much to think about, heaven and hell. It really is. And thank goodness they got rid of purgatory, too. Can't buy your way to purgatory anymore. No. Or out. Although some people consider the mortal plane a Uh purgatory of sorts. Like where we're at right now? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Because we're, you know, between the uh, proposed... Heaven and hell, paradise and agony sort of life stage. Yes. But I got to say, you know, when I was at the darkest time in my life, that's when I came across Drag Race. Uh I started with season four. I believe it was Float Your Boat. Float Your Boat, okay. That episode. And I finished the season, Mm -hmm. I think the same day I started that first episode Uh and I immediately went to the beginning and even though your time was a bit short Mm -hmm. you made an impression on me Mm -hmm. you have this very charismatic attitude Mm -hmm. and that's something that I really wanted in my own life Mm -hmm. and just over the years as I've come to to follow your career Mm -hmm. I feel even more I guess amazed would be a word. I never really stopped to think about it. Just, I'm thankful that someone who has a platform is using their voice actively to promote so many great causes. Mm -hmm. So many, which it turns out I slowly fell into. Yeah. And so... So you fall into the causes? Which one? I tried to, um, because, you know... For me, it's like if you're not for something, Mm -hmm. you're still for something. Mm -hmm. By not jumping on a bandwagon to help make things better, you're co-signing on the abuse or the different turmoils going on by staying silent. So with everything that's gone on with the administration, I've been actively calling my senators, representatives. To build the wall? (laughs) So you've been actively calling. I've, I have. Nice. In fact, I don't, 
even though I'm clearly not the only one doing it, right. I do feel a sense of accomplishment to see so many things I fought for that have passed. Right. One of those more recent ones is the California Cruelty Free Cosmetics Act, right. which is going to help keep companies from testing on animals in the future. Right. I believe the deadline's about 2020. Mm -hmm. But as an animal rights activist, mm -hmm. hearing you talk about Free the Orcas, Free Lolita, mm -hmm. and I guess the newer one, Boycott Palm Oil. Yeah, Boycott Palm Oil. Hashtag save the orangutans. Absolutely. The orangutans, the rhinos, bears. And the giraffes elephants. are on the endangered species list as well now. Yeah. They say that about 308, no, 300 soccer fields of rainforest is destroyed every day just for the palm oil production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is in Asia, correct? Indonesia is yeah. predominantly, yes. Uh -huh. And it's a very scary thought because for those of you all who may not know, the rainforest has been deemed the lungs of the earth. Right. About 30% of our oxygen is produced from the rainforest alone. Wow. Not to mention that the rainforest is an incredible source of biodiversity. Mm -hmm. And biodiversity is crucial to not only evolution, but survival. Mm -hmm. Because when you lack biodiversity, that's when you become susceptible to things like diseases. Mm -hmm. You don't have all these different immune systems going on. So if you just have like one of the same animal, if a deadly disease comes out of the blue, it could completely wipe out a species right? or at least severely devastate that population. Right. And well, maybe this climate change will be detrimental to us humans because <laughs> <laughs> we seem to be the ones that are the major problem here. Humans are canceled. Humans are canceled, but we seem to be the problem, but we have to be a solution to the problem as well. Absolutely. Correct. And and speaking of the orcas with the hashtag, uh, hashtag free orcas and hashtag save Lolita, and with the orcas right now, the, 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 the West Coast orcas are struggling. The pods are down to the, in the 70s now, yeah. and they're not growing at all. It's really sad. I think it has to do with the salmon, depletion of the salmon and stuff. Yes, I was reading about that. Of course, instead of uh, the over salmon overfishing industry, go on. I know exactly what you're talking about because recently they made it legal again to start killing. I believe it was sea lions uh -huh. to help bring back the salmon population, and I'm there yelling at my screen like, "No, we need to." cut back on how much salmon we're eating. We need to work on projects to bring those numbers up, not legalize the killing of animals just trying to live their best life. Right. It's an atrocity to me that we'd rather kill more than kill less to solve well, a problem. Japan is killing right now whales again. Japan is um is is they passed a law that allows whaling to happen. Yeah. Which is tragic. And they also killed the um, they also killed the dolphins off too. You know, with the documentary, the cove and the cove that's going on over there, where they kill the dolphins for edible consumption. Um, but does it make sense to eat dolphins or to eat those kind of those kind of sentient beings because they're so high uh, with mercury? The ocean is so toxic, right? Toxicity and everything, and there's so much mercury in the ocean right now that it's not. The people eating that doesn't make any sense for them to eat them anyways, but they're just being stubborn and they're going ahead and killing. And also over in Russia, they also steal orcas out of the ocean. Uh, right. And they're doing that. And then they sell them to China. And China has 40-some-odd 40, 40 aquariums and counting where they take orcas and captivate them. Um, they put them in an 18-wheeler from Russia and they drive them over to, to China where they, they have them in the captivity. Right, which and is animal cruelty. That came out of the capture of Lolita because in that whole ordeal, five baby orcas were drowned because they stayed within the net. Mm -hmm. And instead of reporting that, they cut open those baby orcas, filled their bodies with rocks, 
and they tied anchors to their tails, hoping nobody would ever find out. And that's in the town of Seattle. It's uh, out the coast of Seattle. Yeah. And the, I forget what the town is, what they call it over there. What people don't understand, and you brought it up, is that orcas are incredibly intelligent, but they're also sentient beings. Their brains almost rival that of humans because of how developed they are. They have complex family structures. Correct. They learn. They have their own dialects within the families. Yes, correct. That's Frida in the back barking. She's a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and to put all these orcas together from different pods, uh-huh. it's traumatizing. They don't speak the same language. They don't know each other. Correct. They're devoted to their families. They stay amongst the pods. And sometimes they're different pods, different groups of pods. I believe now there's four four categories of orcas, um, or four different um, groups. And there's there's um, there's the out to sea. There's the sentient ones, and then there is not sentient. No, there's the regional ones. Then there is the out to sea, and then there is the resident orcas. Right. Resident. Resident ones are the ones that don't usually eat mammals. They only eat fish. They're not known to eat. And then the transient ones go up and down. Like, Tillicum comes from a transient pod. But they're, they're a little more, they're more aggressive. But they eat more, more like seals and other things. Yeah. And then the ones out to sea, they don't know much about them. And I know there's another one, but everybody can Google that and look that up themselves to find out if they have time to do that. Right. And, you know, the thing is, we're not going to learn any more about orcas watching them perform these little shows at SeaWorld. Uh-huh. It's just inhumane, and it really shows how distressed they are when these gentle creatures who don't kill humans in the wild... They don't harm humans at all. Never have. They don't even seek revenge. I would imagine if they would seek revenge. I mean, especially even dolphins. Well, orcas, first of all, are a dolphin, too. Um, right. in the dolphin family. But they, uh, our dolphins don't seek revenge either. They've known to protect and save people if they fall off a boat or are drowning. A dolphin will save a person. And also in the documentary Killers in Eden, which I went to Eden, Australia, to the Well Museum, Eden, Australia, um, there's a report when they were, the orcas and the, the whalers were report whaling together, but somehow their boat capsized or turned over whatnot. And a mariner, I am not, but anyhow, um, <laughs> it turned over, whatever, and the men were in the water, but the orcas, you know, were saved the men and brought them out of the water and got them back on their boat. So, which is, you know, they work with us instead of working apart. And there's also a, another parts of the world where a place where the, the dolphins and the fishermen work together as well, catching fish together. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And in Eden, the the bounty was, was shared between the orcas. The orcas would corral the whale, a whale in, and then the whalers would get the whale. They would leave the whale in the ocean at overnight, you know, dead, and the orcas would get their part, which they like to eat the, the tongue, and and then so then the whalers would come and take it. And this, this was a, started off with the aboriginal people, then it moved on to the, the, the commonwealth, which is English, you know, which were part of the commonwealth as well here in the United States, and we kind of forget that too. Oh, yes. I want to know, why did you fall into these causes for animal rights? Because I know you do a a few different ones, but Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, like, what is the motivation? I care about the environment. I care about the planet. I I have a green thumb. I um, care about indigenous culture. Um, That's another one that's not brought to the forefront indigenous culture as well which they're americans first americans in fact the constitution comes from the iroquois nation um but we're not really taught that and like the united arrow that the eagles holding we also have an eagle not just mexico um but i just i'm concerned for them and i'm just concerned as a human being and i'm concerned as a human as a nurturer um also being that we are gay or homosexual or transgendered, bisexual, gender fluid, whatever, in reality, in the past, before Eurocentric, uh, before they, they got here with the Christian religion, which 
er, comes from the Middle East, and Jesus was a refugee. Remember that too. When they fled to, um, when Mother Mary and they went to Egypt to live in Egypt for a little while so that they wouldn't kill them off, right? So don't forget that they're refugees either. Um, so, but I, just something that naturally comes for me, and then maybe it's because in, in before, before white man came to America, in most indigenous tribes, the um, gay people, the shamans, the gays, they were revered and they were also nurturers taking care of the tribe. Like for example, some, some, there was a Buffalo woman, a she, she, and I think she was Crow, but she, she nurtured and she was a lesbian, of course, but she had married many wives. Like if somebody was, if um, her kids were left alone, uh, two spirit would adopt the kids and bring them into their house and take care of them and stuff like that. So Fundamentally, we're nurturers. We're not villains. We're not sinful. We're not vilified. All that came from from Christian way of thinking that comes from the Middle East. So, And the reason I asked you this is because while I haven't personally received this remark or question, if you want to consider it that, is I often see people say, well, you know, why care about animals? There's all these terrible things happening to people mm -hmm. and you know I want to go ahead and share a story which we'll touch on our next subject which is about a orangutan named Pony uh -huh. so Pony was taken away from her family at a very young age she was, was this in the states or is she in Pony Borneo in Indonesia okay a palm oil plantation area uh -huh. This orangutan was stolen from her home, and she was, she, they forced this orangutan into prostitution. Prostitution? They would shave her every day. Uh -huh. She developed all kinds of scars and scabs. They sold this, they would sell the services of this orangutan for $3. To and women? To humans. Oh, that's disgusting. She was thought of as a novelty, and they refused to give up that orangutan. It took the justice of about 35 police officers to free her. She was about seven. This happened in 2003 when they finally rescued her. But the reason I bring this up is because, you know, to all the people who may wonder why we may talk about animals or care so much is because humans and uh, they exercise an enormous amount of power over animals who don't have the same ability as us to voice their own opinions and that's just one of the many horrible examples of how truly disgusting people can be well, it's also the, the industry, of the food industry is another industry that's with the animals. Um, for example, the food industry is really disgusting and it's something we should focus on and work on, but it's not one that I'm going to work on with my causes. I mean, I will let people know that it's a cause that people should look into the way the food is manufactured, the way that the, the cattle industry, the way the chickens, the way the different the food we eat, you know, it's all a cause as well. And it produces a lot of gas, mess gases yeah. into the air. It produces some, um, we use an astronomical amount of water. How about, let's talk about Nestle. Nestle is another company that goes into every country and steals the water. There's a problem in California. There's a problem with the food industry in California with the almond, almond trees that yeah. they're using a lot of water, which is unsustainable to the environment for almond milk. Um, and then they tell everybody in California there's a drought and not to use the water. Right. Right? But that's because they're spending, using so much of the gallons of the water for the, these almond trees. Then there's also Nestle, who's in Northern California, who bottles up the water. And um, people protest and stuff. And I'm kind of hesitant and scared, uh, plus, you know, fear like, oh, going up against such corporations. But it's very like talking out or talking going to out the protest and talking out. I think it is you know sometimes you want to be careful because they're so powerful, you know. Absolutely. But the truth is they're not doing good for us and they're abusing 
are they're abusing our planet they're abusing us as humans for example the the coca-cola companies and all the companies the bottled water companies all those bottles of waters are, are derivative of the oil oil products or oil waste that comes from the oil and then they're making money on that to put our waters in um, bottles of plastic and stuff yeah so that and then that plastic of course goes into our ocean we're eating that wonder you wonder why so many people are having cancers and stuff in their lives these days because of all the plastic right and because of also the pesticides and everything as well more than ever we have a very sick society we've ramped up all the preservatives all these chemicals and it's showing by the increased level of not only cancer but things like heart disease diabetes the industry needs to be needs to be changed and looked at and the way that our fruit our food is treated and the way those animals are treated it's still a cause right. i'm going to start i have a lot of friends that have started they're going vegan or they're going in another direction as far as is concerned i'm not going to stop eating meat per se i don't have a problem with with food per se um but i do have a problem with the way the food is produced and stuff i think that we're allowed to eat meat i think it's a normal part of the system but i think that um a system of living but i think that we need to to reframe the way we do the, the production of all these products and i myself am going to start cutting back on the way that i eat what i eat and the, my consumption of beef and things like that because it's just not right the well, environment i'm just thankful that um even though this isn't your diet or anything you went ahead and considered the options and you want to entertain some well my when i as my grow my brand grows i do want to have like a cookbooks and things like that and i would like to have an eatery along with my brand of things and i'm thinking about doing um pop-up shops oh, and, yeah. and they'll be in different cities larger cities um and then um new york san francisco chicago things like that and then what i want to do is i want to have a, a I want to do menu on there that can be vegan friendly or whatever, but you know, regular recipes that people aren't going to know they're vegan. We'll just say sausage on a bun, but this weird vegetable sausage they won't know, or there'll be different things, but it'll be all vegan based. And that's what a lot of companies do. Instead of saying like vegan, they just say oh. plant based. But like when I worked, for example, at the big fisherman um, in here in, in, it was over here in Rockport, outside of Rockport, in between Aransas and Rockport, they had a a dollar seventy-five. All you can eat: chicken livers, chicken gizzards, chicken fried steak, uh, with a puree of potato soup and a biscuit that would come with your all this. And um, but the the thing was, they never said anything. But the the whole time, the, the chicken fried steak was always a tofu steak, or you know, was a vegetarian soup. But nobody knew that. You don't really have to do replicas. It's all how you season the, the products. Because, for example, before I was like, oh, look, a, a vegan steak. Once I had this at a, at a restaurant in Long Beach. This was years ago. And it was it was rather ridiculous. It was a piece of tofu, the, uh, half of a, a slab of tofu. And it was brought to me square. But then all it had on it was A1 sauce on it. No. Yes. Now, that's, what a joke, you know? For real. Now, that's a joke. But that's a fact. But I have friends, like I have a friend in Brazil. He's, um, and I'll go see him in April. But he is very animal, animal oriented and started a catering service called Flamingo. Flamingo Catering. And they he does vegan food, actually, and makes everything vegan. And it's so delicious, you know. And most indigenous cultures and tribes before, um, before you know, the Columbus Exchange, and Columbus, we can talk about him, too. He's another evil person that should be taken off of things. But he, um, they, the, most indigenous tribes, they, they didn't eat as much meat. The meat consumption wasn't as big. They ate a lot of beans, legumes, beans, and they ate a lot of uh, squash and or pumpkin mm -hmm. and beans and different things like that. It was, it was more organic. I mean, they did eat um, vegetables. I, I mean, they eat insects, but when they would have fish and... Some regions might have more fish, but when they did more meat and things, that was more so for a holiday or for, you know, maybe the king or somebody would eat that stuff. Right. Marrying at where you're at, like Aztecs, those tribes, th those um, groups or, or empires, the king was the one that mainly ate more of the meats and stuff or whatever. I think oftentimes the mindset of towards Native Americans is that 
they just were kind of brutes or uncivilized when in reality they had all these complex structures like they had for their civilizations kind of almost like a city planning going on because they were structured in a way where they were like living on grids Mm -hmm. and they had irrigation already Mm -hmm. granted that's not everyone but a lot of them Mm -hmm. and unfortunately this mindset to this day persists and we see well not you and i at least (laughs) there's just this mentality that it's not our problem and unfortunately native americans are amongst one of the groups who still have it the worst even today still the worst yes there's high rates of suicide alcoholism child trafficking kidnapping and and completely ignored for example with the pipeline that um the pipeline also the dakota of access the dakota access pipeline completely ignored about that which was a prediction of theirs that this was going to happen yeah that if it happened the black snakes was going to if the black snake comes it's going to tear them up and the problem it was with that is because that oil it liner first of all oil and gas there's oil and gas leaks all the time on one every other day, there's all around the world a gas leak or an oil spill. In fact, uh, The Intercept in 2010 said that there's been about 3,300 leaks from pipelines. See? And then also, um, the, the pipe, for example, the, the Juan Valdez pipeline, if we want to go back to orcas, there's a pot of orcas up there that has not been able to breed since 19, whenever that, 1990 when that happened? 91? Um, that they have not been able to reproduce at all because of that infection. You know, it infected their, their system, the reproduction system, the oil spill. And um, the, the tax cut that was given this past year that the Trumpster did, number 45, he, they produced this, um, the, tax, the tax cut will be paid off or repay the government through the oil, taking of oil from Alaska from the reserve, which is a proven fact, but we're not, we're not told that. It's an under, underlying fact that, or a hidden part of the agenda that we're not told, or the public's not told about. Because they know if they made this news prominent, people are going to get mad. There was a limited amount of exposure regarding what was happening at the Dakota Access Pipeline, and at yet... The Sioux Reservation? Yes. Yes. Standing Rock? Yes. Hashtag uh-huh. free standing rock. Yeah, I've always been doing that. I still say hashtag. I never forget hashtag standing rock. I've been doing that, promoting that constantly too. Uh-huh. There wasn't a lot of coverage on standing rock. It was, there was a lot of sweeping under the rug what was happening. Too much sweeping. Exactly. And in fact, around here, there was so many, here in, here in Rockport, there's a lot of people that were, well, because since um, the Trumpster was the whole, the whole thing has been a mess and Obama wasn't very helpful. He could have signed this a long time ago. Right. But come to find out a lot of them were invested in it as well. It wasn't until right before he left office that he halted the construction of the pipeline. Right, just weeks before he left. But up in the last month, huh? Well up until that point he had remained pretty much quiet on the whole thing. Uh huh. And also um then then um he signed it and 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 Hillary, I believe, come to find out, they they were invested in this these pipelines as well. A lot of money invested in this. It's all about money, greed, anger, and animality. But mm-hmm. anyhow, um, but if we don't have you know clean water, we don't have light. Um, and all this, there's other ways to supplement uh, supplements for plastic. There's other kinds of plastics that can be made out of other organic, natural things. Besides, well, oil's natural anyways. But I don't I don't think we should be using it personally. Right. But there's other ways to do this. For example, you there's a there was a scientist that was on 60 Minutes this past weekend, and he's creating all kinds of things out of plant products. And there's another scientist, another one that invented. A, I read on the plane in a, one of the airline magazines. Another young, another scientist that's creating leathers out of fruit product as well. And there's also mushrooms or mycobiology. Mycobiology is the study of, of mushrooms and how they work. And, and Paul Stamets, he's created many things and investigated so much of mushrooms and everything. There's even products that were made out of mushrooms like clothing and garments 
and leather products, so to speak, from mushrooms as well. But people don't want to focus on that because there's so much money going into the oil industry and they're making so much money. That's the problem. Kind of like what happened with hemp. It's got all these great Correct. uses. And you can make oil out of hemp. I'm sure plastics out of hemp. Clothing. Clothing and everything else. But why was it illegal when it's less harmful than a lot of alcohols? In fact, like maybe most alcohols. Oh, there's a hemp alcohol? Oh, no. I mean, like... Okay. In terms of, you know, addiction and all that, and uh -huh. what did... Oh, how, you mean smoking marijuana? Yes. <laughs> oh, well, that's one thing. Marijuana is one thing, another, but marijuana is not a problem either. And that's what I, I find um, so appalling with them. It's a natural product, and it's our problem here in the States, I wouldn't say it's a marijuana problem. I would say our problem is a meth problem and things like that. Oh, absolutely. And this country is more meth and stuff like that. And, him, the president, vilifying people and immigrants and things like he's doing with the border wall. And he was just here and trying to build the border wall. And that lady crying, I almost wanted to write her a nasty letter and say some very vile things with some keyboard courage to her. <laughs> but the mother on there crying. But they're using all this stuff that I find unfair. And I don't think that's the problem here with immigrants. No. And... The, the problem, and that's not the drug problem with immigrants, is not the problem either, and murder is not a problem with immigrants either. In my opinion, the biggest problem when it comes to the war on drugs is the war on drugs itself. The war on drugs was specifically to target Nixon's enemies, which were the quote-unquote hippies and uh, minorities. The thing is that the war on drugs has only made the, war, the dr drug trade more efficient People have ramped up productions, gone overseas. It took over small towns because the thing is, you cannot address the supply and think the problem's over. The demand will still be there. The difference is that you've made that market more profitable because it's a commodity now to get a hold of drugs. Well, it's the same thing with ISIS. Inadvertently, well, we supplied the first people over there, the ISIS, or before it was ISIS, when it was whatever, the Taliban. We are the ones that supported the Taliban by supplying guns to them yep. to conquer another country or another another region over there to on a conquest that we were doing probably for oil, bottom line. <laughs> Usually what it is. And also, like Dick Cheney, the vice president for Bush, he's also a warlord, and we su he supplies the weapons and the weapons to the, the wars. That's why we go to war, to supply these weapon companies so that these weapon companies make money. And then we also supply the eminent, we supply all these weapons, and then there's the NRA, which I believe is also a problem as well. And this stems from colonization when they came over here with the guns, and they, they put this white fear in everybody saying, okay, let's be afraid now. The bad guys are coming. The bad guys are coming. Well, if we're the bad guy, the bad guys aren't coming. It's a common misdirection. Use people's fear and turn it against others so you don't address the real problems. Correct. And... So, the, with, for example, with the weapon industry, too, that's that's a major, that's another industry that there should be um, laws on guns and who can buy guns and weapons and all that. And I don't have a personal problem with hunting. That's fine with me. I don't have a problem with, you know, with venison and eating. Like I said, it's all natural in the ecosystem as well. But I do have a problem with guns and people buying guns and shooting people up. And I, we are all, you know, in danger of some crazy AWOL white wannabe Rambo going down, shooting everybody down. And I think what people don't realize is when you compare the amount of shootings here in America to places much bigger like Russia or India, it becomes quite evident the disproportionate amount of killing. There is a problem here. I'm not sure if it's a mental thing, if people just have too much privilege or if you know it's depression or something but we need to look at new ways of addressing the problem because just like the war on drugs doing the same thing continuous does not work well you better get yourself a gun 
to protect yourself because you're a very handsome young man and you better protect yourself. I think you mean beautiful young lady. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't know you were trans. <laughs> transvestite. All right. Sweet transvestite. Sweet transvestite. <laughs> The word transvestite, I like to use loosely. I think it's fun. It's cliche from the 80s and when they would call drag queens or people that do drag transvestites. So that's why I like to use it a lot. With um, everything that's gone on, I think continuously the thing that frustrates me the most is just the way things are framed. We're led to believe that because a news media outlet has the resources, it's on TV, we should just go ahead and blindly trust everything they're saying. Correct. And the thing is that when it comes to writing, the perp the point of writing is to propose an idea or to influence your readers. And you really got to think of all things like that. What are they trying to influence you to believe? Mm-hmm. And, that's one of the reasons why Standing Rock was such a pit in my stomach because there is this reporter named Amy Goodman. Mm-hmm. She was actually arrested for crossing the lines over there to try and report on the atrocities happening to. The was this after the 6th of December? Because they closed the place down. There was a certain date in December and they said they closed it down in December 6th because I know this because. Michael Caddy, my guitarist. Um, he Hi, went, Michael. He went, yes, he went, uh, he's my accompanist, not a, my accompanist, guitarist, duet partner, whatever. Um, but he, um, and you might have seen him in videos like Walking Children in Nature. He's in the Love Pinata video, and he's out there on Instagram, Michael James Caddy. He's a sweet person, but he also fights with the people, um, the indigenous people, and he, he, volunteers with them but he I told him I said they're closing down Standing Rock they're not letting people in so he got he hightailed it over there and got in to Standing Rock and got in and he was there in through December through December January February on the front lines and just recently it was reported that Tiger Swan a security firm they planted a man named Joel Edwards to go into the protests amongst all the water protectors and gather information. Oh, they've been doing this for years. Same thing like with Hurricane Katrina. There was um, groups that were sent in there, special teams and special groups. This stuff is going on here, and it's not really addressed. And that's what, like, everybody says, you know, oh, Mexico is so corrupt or whatever. Well, in the United States, we're corrupt too, but we just don't see it. We've become used to the corruption. And shopping, consumerism, that's a major issue here. Consumer, consumer, buy, 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 paying into a system. But let's not get too far off track. Let's get back (laughs) on um, environmental issues and the things that are going on. But it is important for people to to educate themselves and to learn. I um, I have to study what I can and so that I can be able to propagate or share these different things like about palm oil and different things but there have i have made bleeps you know or certain snags whatever i feel too that this this cruise young lady everybody's attacking her the 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 lady who got on parliament parliament or what do we call it she's a democrat young lady something cruise a young lady oh yeah yeah, yeah. cortez sorry cortez cortez not ted cruz he's a total a total disgusting person here in texas ted cruz and i don't think people realize what a schmo he is actually they really don't for him to have won re-election they really don't he's really bad to, to to texas and to our government and bad to our society in general and he's probably one of those that he'll be up in the airport sucking on some dicks Well, usually they're the ones, the Republican ones are the ones that are always doing the sort of dirty things. What I find, too, very interesting about politics is when Obama was in the White House or anybody, if if the the Republican Party always goes to extremes to do things, then they're always caught red-handed behind the scenes. And not saying that Democrat is so perfect either because they're always behind the scenes doing things, too, as well. Yep. Always being supported by a corporation or this and that. I'm not saying that I don't I don't agree with all the war we do and getting in, involved in other countries and other things, but our goof is cooked. Uh, we have been involved in other operations to other countries, but the Republicans, what makes me so funny is because 
the, what I think is so funny is because they will sit up there like when Obama was in the White House and they would refuse to do things. And now that we have a Republican in there, they cry wolf, they, they cry and they make all, I mean, they, they, because we don't agree with something, an agenda, they turn it around on us and make a huge hissy fit. And what I find most interesting is that some of these people crying loudest, look how they vote. The, all of this information is available online so you can see how your senators, House representatives are voting, but some of these people, they're nothing more than wolf in sheep clothing. They say one thing, but they do another. Correct. And so, like Democratic Party and stuff too. But most politics people that are, are are running for us and are, are voting, they are always doing underhanded things, and I think that needs to stop because they're here to serve us, serve the people, and they're not serving the people, and that's a major issue. And they're not doing things for the better for us. And people need to realize too. Okay, we're we're producing a lot of babies. We're producing a lot of kids. That, okay, so what's going to happen in the future for them? Right, because at the end of the day, the same way we inherited the world we have now, they're going to inherit the world we give them. And then a lot of people, too, it's like, oh, that's fine. We'll leave it up to God. Well, as far as I'm concerned, there's not a God, and he's not out there, you know, to help us out. I don't believe in that sense. And there's many ways in which you can help. Our society has made money so important that it really does make the world go round in a sense. So the way in which you invest, it's a crucial part of sending a message. If you want to help the orcas, don't be there supporting SeaWorld or Correct. any. Coca-Cola also, you know, like for Saatchi, the Winter Olympics in Saatchi, they stole they stole, not Coca-Cola, but these companies, they, there were so many things that go wrong. You should look into the, the Olympics and see how many bad things have happened as a result of the Olympics. Let's start as a gay person and think about the Olympics back in 1934. When was this? 32. Anyhow, um, when Hitler was already taking charge of Germany and they went there to do the Olympics, um, they pretended that it was life as normal and they let there was gay clubs and gay nightlife yes back in those days in germany and it was normal there so when everybody came in for the olympics they went back to normal as if no no regime was there holocaust going on um genocide right so they made it all normal and, and went along with the olympics and then as soon as the olympics left they went ahead and went back to their normal their normal dealies for example, Saatchi, they were stealing they were stealing orcas out of the ocean, yep. and they stole three orcas. They might have already been in Russia though those orcas, because what they do is they capture them, they take them to a, a, a quarantine area of the orcas, they give them some sort of training and conditioning, and then they sell them to these aquariums. Right. But so they, what they did was they took three of them, put them in the tank for the big show, the big production in Saatchi, and then they um, sold them to China after the Olympics. And then in Mexico City, and I believe in 68, 1968, the people got together and protested against the Olympics um, because they didn't want these Olympics. And they came down and shot the government, shot 400 people dead. It's a huge, huge true story um, that happened. But the Olympics, did they do anything about that? Oh, no, let's keep going, corporate, corporate. Then um, other situations, there's there's other situations like, for example, in Brazil, the Brazilian people didn't want the Olympics to come to Brazil because the same thing, it sent them into a tailspin after the Olympics too. Right, and they just take the land. I mean, this is just one of many examples of how the Olympics harmed the natives in those areas. They'll just reclaim the land like it's nothing, tear down houses, businesses, and then they don't even give proper retributions to those people. They're just like, oh, well. And then there's lots of places in the world where some of these stadiums and things that they built just for the Olympics are just sitting there. I've seen them in, in Austria. They're just sitting there. These, like actually visited? Yes. There's this um, places that this was in, in 1999, the summer of 99, but there was an area we went by where the Olympics were held too, a winter Olympics. Well, it's just sitting there. It's ghost town or ghost city, whatever. Yeah. So there's a lot of that that goes on too. And the Olymp they do nothing. I'm not saying, for myself, I'm not saying there's a problem with the sports. I think it's wonderful display of sports, and it comes from 
the Greek Roman times. I think it's yeah. it's awesome and good for them and everything. And I don't have a problem with sports, but I have a problem with the corporations and the, the involvement of this. And they're not doing anything for the people and for the society. And it's nothing about corporate conglomerates. But this is this is nothing too that we're talking about. We're just kind of scratching the surface too on different things that are going on. But there's so much that we we have to take action as humans and change this thing around. Right. And the thing that frustrates me is people, there's a lot of people who they just don't care to get involved or look into things. And the thing is, is that, again, like I said earlier, that's basically privilege to not, to be able to not care about something is privilege because. But it's affecting you. In one way or another, people think that it's not affecting you. It is affecting you. You just don't know that it's affecting your health. It's affecting your mental, mental, that's health. So it's affecting you. I mean, it's affecting your environment, even though you don't like it. Like, for example, most, most um, industries, um, they're connected next to a river. Or, for example, there's plenty of industries up here on the Gulf Coast that are next to Corpus and, and up in, by Portland. And I know there's some in Port Lavaca. And they're just dumping, and I can see it. Well, you can see it when I when I go to um, there in New York. There's some lakes that are completely contaminated, bodies of water, mm-hmm. and I don't understand why these places have to use our water or be on the water and contaminating the water. For example, Fukushima is still pumping. Absolutely. And that's radiation in the ocean, still going, still going. The whole reason we have the Clean Water Act is because. Back in, I believe it was the 60s. Yes, with Earth Day, Earth Day movement. We, have you seen the documentary? I don't believe I have. It's a documentary, Earth Day, made by PBS. I, I really like PBS. I think they're they're pretty cool. They inform a lot of information, like the Vietnam War and all that. But go on. There was a lake that actually caught on fire because it had so many... Ca- if your water is catching on fire, you know you messed up. Right. There's a lot of um, water that's contaminated, and that's our water, the Earth's water, so I don't understand. And that's the water that the uh, Standing Rock were trying so hard to protect. Within, like, the last six months, they've already had, it was five spills equaling about four barrels of oil. Really? And... Would you know there's also in the Great Lakes, there's uh, in the Great Lakes area, there's also pipelines that are under in the water that are so old and, and all this information you can just, you can gather from YouTube. Uh, YouTube has a lot of information. They upload, they upload on the internet. If you just Google, it's all at our access and there is just the main, the main media, like we're saying, doesn't show you what's going on. Because the main media is getting sponsored and the, the more ratings they get for publicizing whatever's going on, a celebrity or whatever, then that make is making them money. So they're not putting things that are of value. Right. And then again, if you study Thoreau, I've studied Thoreau on Walden twice. I've done the book twice on audio. I haven't read it myself, but I mean, I have read it, but audio, listen to it. Mm-hmm. And he says not to worry so much about idle idle gossip like about what happened in the next town and stuff it's more important to to focus on oneself and what's going on in your environment instead of being focusing out in the media and what media has to say very much the whole like with airplanes put your uh, air mask on before you assist someone else yes you need to mentally and physically prepare yourself so you can be prepared to help others Mm -hmm. and that's something i try to teach people because You know, I've got my reservations. Things do hold me back from time Mm -hmm. to time. But at the same time, I know I need to be strong for Mm -hmm. myself to be strong for others. Mm -hmm. And I try to help enlighten everyone that surrounds me Mm -hmm. with their advice, their spirituality. Mm -hmm. Just, I like being an open book. That's good. Changing gears. I know you've recent well maybe not so recent anymore Mm -hmm. but you're back here at home and yes Fulton I'm in Fulton right now yes okay Fulton in the forest because I I know you've told me like it's like Rockport but also kind of Fulton well because Rockport surrounds Fulton we're a peninsula over here and um it's really nice it's beautiful and I I I ground myself when I'm here I find I find myself at peace and I was 
for a while there, I felt that the city and my drag, I need to make some changes in my career. So I... You were living I, in L.A. Living in L.A. And I'm still living in L.A. I mean, on my taxes, I have to report L.A. because I do so much business out of L.A. as well. It's like dual Texas and L.A. And this past year, I was on the road so much, I was only here a little bit of town, a little bit of time, and I'm actually going to be back on the road again. I'm going to be renting instead of renting. I'm going to just get a storage space and put my stuff in storage and then come when I have free time to come back. <laughs> And I'll still be receiving my mail here, but it's like there's no point in actually renting anything because I'm not here all the time. I'm on the I'm fortunate enough to be on the road working, and you know, living my truth, my dreams, and everything, so to speak. So, and that's a great message. So many people. Oh, that's one of those those that screaming singing dog, <laughs> Frenchie. <laughs> I, I like it here. Um, I wanted to get more involved. We are Hurricane Harvey survivors here, which was made a lot of changes here. Um, if y'all could have seen it when it first happened. Did you come out here? Mm -hmm. I did. I went to a, se it was like not a seminar, but a public speaking event at a ranch they have over here. Mm -hmm. It was for my uh, materials and soil class uh -huh. but they were just talking about how they were going to restore the farm and hopefully the nearby businesses and when I came through here I was of course with a few other college friends there was just tarps over so many roofs uh, fences thrown about well people were living in tents for a while too here seeing it in person truly put it into perspective that the me uh, no videos could ever truly encapture mm -hmm. it almost felt like it was like a feeling not just a sight right it was heavy when i come back you could feel that um i wasn't here i was actually on my way out of town the day before but there was you could still feel the stress even when i came back in december i think i came back in december and you could still feel the the stress of the trees and you could feel the stress and there was also a lot of you could feel the, the stress I mean, mess with Mother Nature, and Mother Nature seems to be fighting back right now and making some changes, and there is the change, either it's climate change or not, the planet is changing, but we we need to, to look at what we're doing because it's a cause and effect, and the effects are starting to happen. Absolutely. And there is going to be more storms, and there is going to be, you know, more storms and more things that are going on, so as humans, I think it's important that we start wising up and paying attention to our causes and what we're doing because the thing is you know it's happened before geo geographical areas change over time but the rate at which it's happening now it's indicative of the larger problem and you know we're actually we have been making so many great changes we're not depleting the ozone like we were but mm -hmm. Just so many years of destruction has kept attacking the ozone mm -hmm. to where it's still decimating. Mm -hmm. And, and you, I, I'm a part of that. I mean, I fly. I mean, but it's like you, it's hard to, to escape anything you do, but it's important to be aware. For example, too, with the wigs and stuff in the industry of like in my industry is very superficial um, in the entertainment business. Um, but I try to, to keep myself with more of a cultural look to me cultural so like i travel i try to wear things from brazil the belt i've been wearing the beads and different things in mexico and different styles and culture i try to wear things of culture but to not be as superficial as it is look all the way at the superficial business look at me look at me but and as far as my wigs go i try to switch out to human hair as much as i can even though that the human hair industry can also be a problem as well oh yes of trafficking and slaving and stuff to people to for their hair but it, I want to do my best for the environment and try to do my best for the environment, pick up and make sure that we're doing our best, spreading awareness. And that's something that we can all do, just become more aware, demand change, and predominantly change our habits. And like, for example, too, in, in America, we have a major issue with our, our education system. Oh my goodness, yes. We have a college problem. For profit schools, colleges are racket. 
And then we have our education system in on, on the level for the youth, the, the younger kids, of course, that is just a big mess. It's a facade. It's fake. It's all testing. It's not really education. Girl, have you seen the Common Core math that they do now? Mm -mm. And then Betsy DeVoe and all these kind of people up in there. That's not very helpful. No. So anyhow, but we got to work to, to educate one another and, and spreading awareness. And for example, Earth Day was all of those things that changed, started from the movement Earth Day. And that's when they got all those regulations put on. And that was the power of the people that started Earth Day. So I would say watch this documentary, Earth Day, if you can. I will. And, and there's plenty of um, documentaries out there on plastic and other things. And the orca, there's another orca. If you don't see Blackfish or read the book, you can also see this, the, the one on Lolita, the yes. documentary on Lolita, um, which I believe is similar to Blackfish, but it, that one's pretty interesting, Lolita. And then, you, I mean, there's all these different things that you can see and, that are at your disposal if you're not into reading or whatever. So the information is out there, and it's it's time for us to take take charge, take 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 reins, take the reins, take the horse by the reins, right? Is that what they say? <laughs> <laughs> take Something action, like step it up, step up our pussies. <laughs> step it up. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the one they're using now. They're saying step it up. Yes. What I love about this area is it. When I think of walking children in nature, it's probably something like this. Mm -hmm. Tell me, you actually are Buddhist, uh -huh, correct. but you started off as um. Well, with Christian background, of course. Yes. Uh -huh. I was trying to remember Raja Draja because you all talked about that. Oh, okay. But how's that been? What Buddhism? I'm cur I've been trying to find inner peace, and I've been directed towards Buddhism quite mm -hmm. a few times. Well, I've been practicing now 18 years. Um, I enjoy it. It um, gives me peace. It, um, it, it, the practice is different for everybody. Sure. But, but everybody's practice is individually different, and that's what's so unique. And that's the cool thing about each one of us is that we all are individually unique, and that's what's so important and special about us. But yet we're all connected. So I practice, um, I chant um, regularly, um, and I, I practice Nichiren Buddhism, and I practice with an organization called the SGI. Um, and it's been 18 years, and I thoroughly enjoy it, and I plan on practicing um, for the next 60 years to come, yeah. So, there you have it. As far as that's concerned, I mean, and lately I've been, usually when we chant, we have a focus, uh, we call it the Gohonzen, and it's a scroll that one will chant to, and that you chant to, that's given to you from the organization or whatever, and you chant, you earn it, of course, but you chant to that, so that you're focused, and you chant with your eyes open. And um, this vacation that I'm not vacation, but I'm here for a little while in Texas for the month I've been here, and I will be here before I head to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Uh, Mexico. I um, have been chanting outside, which is nice, and uh, to the birds and whatever, and the trees, and connecting with the earth. And you chant for your environment as well. You pray for your environment. You pray for for where you're living and the people around you and everything. And you feel much centered since you've done it. Oh, I like it. I wouldn't give it up. Do you think maybe it's my highest my highest practice? I mean, I, I do um, pray. I've learned how to pray, of course, the Christian way, and then I learned how to meditate on my own. And I do practice yoga, which is also a practice, and I I enjoy that. And I learned some some prayer from that as well, and I practice it as well. But my my highest teaching and the highest practice for me is Nichiren Buddhism and chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Whenever I think of Buddhism. The song Quam Happy just comes to mind. Oh, really? <laughs> there's, your, there's your mutra. Yes. But do you think you can go ahead and sign us off with the chant? Yeah, we can do um, a little daimoku. That's what you call it. Daimoku is the invocation of Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, and daimoku is a Japanese word. And um, Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, 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 Nam Yoho Renge Kyo. Awesome. Thank you.
you so much, Tammy, for being here. For people who may want to go ahead and give you a follow if they haven't already, uh -huh. where can they find you? Well, you can do my Instagram, um, Planet Tammy. I also have a Patreon if you would like to um, become a Patreon. That's also Planet Tammy. I also have my own website. I have a website as well. Um, and that is just Tammy Brown at TammyBrown.net. Tammy Brown, that's my website. And then um, Instagram is probably the most. And then I also have Facebook, but the Facebook is maxed out. And then I have a, but you can follow it. And then there's also the Facebook fan page, but uh, at no point. Facebook is funky, my, by the way. I face fuck as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, but you can follow. That's where I'm at. Um, I'm not hard to find. So. Well, thank you again. You're simply the best.